Hello? People can hear me. Do I need, do I need this, or do, does anybody? Or I can? Maybe I'll, I, I'll start without it, and just tell me if I've become really quiet and start talking into the floor, then, uh, then somebody has to yell at me. OK, it's, it means I get two hands as well, which is really nice. Um, Cool. So thanks a lot, guys. We haven't done every, very much marketing for the Civi HR session, so this might be a first look uh, for a few people. Um, so um, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Jamie Novick. I'm here from CompuCorp. Uh, we're a digital agency that specialise in open source. I think uh, a few, most people will know us. There might be a few new people, new faces in the crowd as well. Um, so like I said before, um, we, we like to build stuff. Uh, so unlike uh, you know, some Civi consultancies who are kind of more about maybe hosting or some are more about just doing a bit of configuration, we tend to do quite a lot of um, build work on top of Civi. Um, so, um, and just to mention our, some of the clients we've been lucky enough to work with. So uh, from Wikimedia, uh, we're doing a big project with Healthwatch to kind of roll Civi out to, I think it's 150 sites, also working with Circle on that. Uh, Farm Africa, a pilot client here, doing a project to roll out Civi for the Photographers Gallery. They're a medium-sized uh, gallery based in central London and a number of other uh, non-profits as well. Um, so, um, what is Civi HR? Um, so, how many people have heard of Civi HR? Not the people I recognise, please. Put your hands down. <laughs> the people I don't recognise. How many people have heard of Civi HR? Okay, good. Um, so, sorry? I think I used Okay, tried it out and gave it, gave it a little look a little while back. Okay, excellent. Um, so um, how many people are kind of like developer types would consider themselves to be more technical people? Okay, yep, uh, yep, Corinne, you count. Um, and um, so, and, and how many people are actually looking for a new HR system at the moment or are thinking about it? Okay, so three, four, five. Okay, great, cool. Okay, so to give the background on the Civi HR project, so um, Civi HR is the brainchild of uh, a foundation, uh, a London-based foundation called Zing. Uh, so they're a grant-making organisation. So Zing was set up uh, a few years back um, uh, by a, a wealthy benefactor who made, uh, you know, made some money in IT basically. Um, and uh, with the goal of Zing was to help. Uh, Nonprofits to uh, to improve themselves by through a number of sources, but one of which is is through IT or investment in IT. Uh, so, if I understand it correctly, Zing were handing out uh, small grants to nonprofits, 10, 20k, you know, grants for them to invest in their IT and infrastructure. Um, and unfortunately, those didn't always go so well. So, if you give you know 10, 20k to a nonprofit to spend on IT, uh, unfortunately, they don't always have the technical. Ours always went. Beautifully well. Beautifully Others well. Didn't go. Others didn't always go so well. I've been corrected. Okay. Um, and so um, they looked around to see whether or not there might be uh, something better that maybe they could do. Um, and they came across uh, the Civi community and saw, okay, wow, this is a, an open source project uh, for nonprofits. You know, 10,000 installs worldwide, uh, big reach. Hopefully, maximising the um, the investment. Um, is there something similar that we can kind of do there? Um, and uh, from what I understand, they went back to the pilot uh, partner organisations and said, well, you know, guys, you know, we've seen this. Um, is there something good that we can do for you? Um, and uh, they said HR. So Zing said, OK, great, we're going to make a, an open source HR system. Um, and so um, in a roundabout kind of manner, uh, Zing came to us and said, OK, we're based in London, you're based in London. Um, you know, we want to kind of develop this HR product. Um, can you do it? And we said, yeah, that sounds great. Uh, and so that's kind of how Civi HR was born. Um, so um, the, the project's now been running for, uh, with us for about uh, 12 months. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about kind of the roadmap and where we're up to and, and what we're kind of looking to do, uh, looking to do later. Um, we've got on board um, six main pilot clients. Um, and in terms of process, it's all about kind of trying to understand, okay, what is, it that, uh, what is it that people want from an HR platform, but what is it specifically that non-profit organizations want from an HR platform? Because non-profits have slightly different challenges maybe than normal organizations. So 
Uh, for example, non-profits tend to manage large volumes of volunteers with slightly different uh, working patterns than uh, standard kind of contracted employees. Um, and trying to understand kind of what are the, what are the real uh, challenges that, um, that non-profits face. Um, so we've been working with uh, a number of non-profits. It's actually easier to see stuff on that screen. So if anybody wants to move over to that side of the, the room, then you're very welcome to do so. Uh, so I'm going to point at that screen. Um, so we've got um, Farm Africa, um, 400 staff across six countries, uh, $50 million, everything's in dollars. Sorry, I should have changed this from Civicon US um, presentation. $50 million worth of income. Um, so particular challenges in Farm Africa is the fact that they're a multinational organisation reporting to the board. Things are constantly changing at a local level. How do we stay on top of all of that? Uh, UK youth, um, 80 staff in the UK, uh, high numbers of uh, voluntary staff and part-time staff as well, um, $8 million income, uh, and again, a distributed team across the UK. How does the HR team stay on top of that? Um, and then some, uh, a couple of organisations from the US and Canada. We've got uh, Valley Rescue Mission, uh, just going to flick onto the next slide, uh, NDP as well, um, and then a couple from India, so Sneha and AKRSP, I think is, is how you uh, pronounce that or say that. Um, so again, large numbers of staff, distributed teams, and how are they kind of like dealing with this? Um, so um, working with these uh, pilot clients to try and understand what are the real challenges that, um, that nonprofits are facing. Um, so what's the, what's the project team? So um, people say to me this is a little bit odd, uh, but the development team is based in the UK, and that's us, CompuCorp. Uh, and the project management is actually based out of India, so that's a team called Drishtand. And people tell me this is the wrong way around for some reason, but um, that's fine. Um, and then, of course, uh, the generous funding and support uh, from Zing as well, and kind of guidance. Um, and a bit about the project. So um, we're quite lucky in this project, uh, which is that because we've got kind of a, a longer term horizon um, and we're also working uh, not with specific fixed goals in mind, but with the aim of producing the best product possible. We're able to approach this in a what we would term a pure agile kind of development process. So this is to say that rather than upfront, do we sort of say, OK, well, here's a big list of all the requirements. These are all the things that we're going to build. What we're trying to do is to break that down into smaller chunks and to do things in an iterative fashion, releasing things, getting feedback from the pilot groups, learning from our mistakes, iterating that, and then feeding that back into, into the solution. Um, so what is Agile? Well, Agile is firstly a buzzword, so everybody talks about Agile, and there are lots of books written about Agile, and I wouldn't purport that we do a pure Agile process as per the textbooks, um, and nor do I think it applies in all circumstances. Um, but what we try to do is take the good concepts from it. Um, so one of the things is about being user-centric, and that is to, rather than to, to write requirements in a big list of, hey, it needs to do this, it needs to do that, what we're trying to do is understand what the users are trying to achieve. So as a user, I want to be able to do this because of that. And getting all of that documented, and that then feeds back into the way that we're then wireframing the product and then designing it. Um, so. And also the fact that you know, all, all projects have limited resources at the end of the day. Um, and how do we maximize the limited resources and prioritize that? Um, so in an agile methodology, what we do is we look at things and we say, OK, let's build the most important features first. We build the most important stuff first and then get those out for feedback, rather than trying to attack absolutely everything and not getting anything done. Um, and as I said, it's iterative development. So things come out, get feedback, improve. So we're on version two of several items. We've had to rework several other items as well in order to improve them and constantly evolve. Um, so what I would say is that this isn't generally a great way to approach all client projects. And certainly with some clients, you'll find it very difficult. Clients have fixed scopes, fixed budgets, fixed timescales. Very difficult to do something in, a, in an agile fashion with, with those kind of constraints. On the other hand, when you're trying to take a product to market and get that out to people and do it in the best way, agile fits, fits very well. Uh, oh, we've got a pretty slide about that as well. So uh, this shows some of the process. So planning discovery. So within an agile environment, we talk about kind of discovery as opposed to uh, and business analysis. Uh, so discovering, wireframing, sprint planning, and then build testing and iterating. OK, cool. Right, so that's all the, the project stuff, all the bump. 
Um, so let's actually talk about uh, CVHR. So uh, what's new? Um, so CVHR is up to version 1.5. Uh, and we've got now uh, a more developed job contract module. We've got a separated job roles module with more flexibility. Um, we're working on the contact summary. Um, we have a self-service portal, which I'll go into, and the tasks and assignments module that I briefly showed at the extension showcase. Um, so I'm just going to dive into these, basically, and show you guys around. Um, so the first, the real big piece of work that we've been working on for the past you know, six, seven months is the self-service portal. Um, so what does this all mean for the uninitiated? Um, so HR systems don't exist just in the HR department generally. This is an organization-wide system that everybody um, has access to in order to request leave, for example, to update their details with the HR department, in order to uh, manage toil, which is an especially complicated thing. Um, there's also sometimes a need for the HR department to supply uh, you know, uh, what do we call them? Uh, documents, handbooks, working practices, codes of conduct, all of those documents need to be available for, uh, for the teams and managed. Um, again, people have different emergency contacts that they need to uh, maintain with the organisation, so being able to say, oh, hang on a second, well, it used to be, used to be my brother, now it's my spouse. Um, staff directories, well, we want to all be able to know what the phone numbers, how do we contact everybody within the organisation. Um, and the last one there is also, we mentioned job vacancies as well. So, you know, if there's a job going in the organization, you kind of want to publicize that to the other people in the organization first. Um, so we've done a lot of work uh, on the self-service portal. Uh, so I'm going to dive out of that and go in here if I find the right login. So can everybody see that? on one of these screens. So hopefully it's not too bright, like nods and stuff. OK, cool. Um, so what have we got? Yeah, so um, I'm logged in as just uh, This is actually the manager. So um, within the self-service portal, the idea is that we have uh, staff members, which is for your general kind of all-purpose people who are working in the organization, could be volunteers as well. Um, but then some people will be managers as well. And those managers will be able to, for example, approve leave. Uh, and those managers will also have their own team of contact, uh, team that they, they're able to manage other things for. Um, we'll also talk about tasks as well and how they can kind of manage tasks around their team and stuff. Um, but here, like just some simple stuff, you know, my details block, so they've got their details. Uh, people are able to edit their details directly um, if the internet keeps up. Oh, needs a bit of styling and stuff. Um, I'll skip over the task block. Uh, this person's a manager. I'll come back to uh, manager absence approval, but you can see that the block uh, with some things that they're waiting to approve. Um, they have their leave, which is kind of shown here. Um, so here it's kind of showing zero entitlement. Oh, I don't get very much entitlement. That's a shame. Um, but people can request leave here through the self-service portal. Uh, so what type is it? Um, uploading a document if it needs it. What are the dates going to be? So from the 19th to the... Bom, 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 let's say to the 25th. Uh, and so these will have the dates selected, uh, any notes that you want to. Is this going to, I think this will reject if I haven't got any leave approved available. Yeah, you don't have enough days. So there are some rules as well around that to kind of say, okay, people can't take leave that they, they don't have. Um, and uh, the process there, so if you request leave, that kind of com comes through and then the manager would be able to uh, approve that. Um, sickness reporting, so if somebody uh, is ill or doesn't, doesn't turn up for a day, um, the uh, staff member or manager can record the sickness and say, okay, sickness, uh, again, uploading a document if there's a document note. Yes, I was off from this day to this day. Fine, some more reasons. Sorry, I was ill. Great. Yeah, I should do it as a staff member. That's fine. Anyway, so that comes through, but I'll show you that later. Um, and uh, just going down the page, staff directory, um, which is actually shown kind of separate here, but I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Uh, oh, great, yeah, absent request at least, gone through, cool. Um, HR documents and downloads, so those are kind of shown quickly here, and vacancies as well, kind of shown on this, on this dashboard page, and I'll come to the documents manager in a bit. So just kind of moving through the screens, um, 
your full details here, being able to update your emergency contact coming in here and updating, etc. Um, the full page with all of the HR resources and documents uh, with a useful search if you want to get across it. Um, this is quite neat in the sense that, you know, if you have any attachments and things, you can get to them, you can download them all kind of immediately. So sometimes with organizations, there's like five, ten documents are all kind of part of a handbook or something like that. So that all fits together. Um, job vacancies. Do we have any job vacancies in it? No, I don't think we put any in, do we? Oh, no, we do have one. OK, great. So job vacancies here, and people can then go through to the online application process and fill in their details, et cetera. If they're already logged into the system, it will pre-populate all of their details in the online form, et cetera, which is useful. Um, and then the staff directory here. So staff directory, yeah, what you would expect, being able to search for people. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Whatever it may be, that's great. And bringing back people or searching them by department or manager. Um, there. So that's just a real brief overview of kind of the, the self-service portal, the functionality there. Staff able to log in, managers ab able to approve, um, and so on. Um, so the other big bit of functionality, uh, or one of the other big bits of functionality that built, uh, that I showed very briefly was the task and assignment module. So what the feedback was from the, the pilot clients is that for HR in general, um, there's a lot to do and there's a lot to stay on top of. So I know that we've got five new joiners who are joining next week and there's five things that I need to do for each of them and there's four documents that I need to get from each of them. How do I manage all of this and make sure that we're compliant and keeping all the documents I I in one place? Um, and Civi does some of that already actually. So Civi does a fair bit around uh, task management. There's this concept called activities. Activities can be assigned to people. Um, the issue is, is that it's, it's not very quick and easy to get around activities, not very quick and easy to find which ones are assigned to you or assigned to somebody else and make sure that they're followed up. That could pile up very quickly and wouldn't, it would be difficult to stay on top of. Um, so one of the things that we did quite a big piece of work around is um, developing a task dashboard, which is really driven towards making uh, people's life easy. Um, so um, the idea is that uh, people have a, a joiner or lever, and we would say maybe that's an assignment. Um, the assignment would be a particular contact. I need to put in staff, yep, Adam Smith. Uh, we might say, OK, this is a new joiner. Uh, the join date is going to be at the end of the month. Uh, and for those who have used Civi a little bit, they might recognize some of the terms uh, at the top here, standard timeline, for example. This is all based on uh, a module for Civi CRM, which is called Civi Case. And within Civi Case, it allows you to set up um, a series of tasks that need to be done or activities that need to be done and the due date or the offset from a particular date. So what you can do um, is for this extension or for, um, for, um, or for Civi Case in general, is um, configure a case type so that you give it a particular date, and then you say these other tasks have to all be done before or after that particular date in a particular offset. Um, and that then feeds into this page here. So you can say, OK, well, all of these tasks, we know that those need to be done for a new joiner. OK, great. Well, I'm going to assign them to the manager, uh, who I forgot the name of. I think it was, is it Justina? Ah, oh, Jess, yeah, thanks. Uh, Cool. And actually, one of the things we're looking at is a way of kind of doing all of these in bulk, because it's a... Uh... So you may, of course, want some of them to go off to the employee as well. Uh, hey, Jess, you're going to have a load of stuff to do. Oh, and say... I was going to say, you can also add an extra task or add a document to it as well, if my phone keeps up. Great. So here, what I've done is I, I've, uh, I've created these extra tasks, but I've assigned them to someone else. And I want to make sure that they actually happen, uh, but obviously, I'm not going to be the person doing them. Um, so it's quite easy to be able to see your delegated tasks. So actually, I've got none for me, uh, but I've delegated all of these tasks to the son to Delina, uh, some to Jess here, or quite a few to Jess, and we can go through here. Um, and you're able to filter very quickly to see, oh, okay, well, I've got an overdue one here, which is 
Delana. Okay, yeah, great. Um, so I'm going to send a reminder to Delana to say to her, hey, why isn't this done yet? And fire that out to her. It might be that actually Delana's left and I need to change this and say, actually, Jess needs to pick this up now. And then we'll do that. And that'll again fire out a note to Jess to say, hey, this has been assigned to you and you need to get on with that. Um, there's also, it's, it's a bit difficult to show because it uh, kind of sends out once a day, um, but a task digest email that goes out to people, which nobody can see on that screen, but you can see very nicely on that screen. Um, so if everybody would like to point their eyes over to there, um, then, uh, and this gives you a list of, you know, kind of, okay, you've got three tasks, two were due, what's overdue, tasks and documents, etc. what's coming up this week, uh, and then any key dates as well. Um, so just on that point, uh, oh, there's also some useful filters. So if you want to kind of filter it to a particular contact or an assignment, just the people who are joining, then you can kind of filter that down. Uh, and if you are trying to look ahead, then you can kind of say, okay, well, what are the tasks in that particular week? So maybe you know it's the week after holidays or something like that. What is it that we all need to do in that date, which is quite handy. Um, so I, I skipped over it a little bit because there's a bit of work to be, to be done on this. Um, but the other thing that HR do a lot of is collating documents. They need to kind of file documents, uh, identity documents, whatever it is on new joiners, leavers, making sure that everything's filed appropriately. Um, and we're really trying to support that as, as kind of much as possible, basically. Um, so I want, I'm going to dip in a little bit to one of the future requirements that we're going to be solving around kind of UK border agency requirements. So um, if you are a sponsor, which is somebody who is able to sponsor migrants, so people who are not from within the EU, uh, and you're, you sponsor them, which a lot of larger, um, larger non-profits are, then there are very specific requirements that you need to meet in order to be compliant with regards to, to documents. Um, and I'm going to drift a little bit here into wireframes. Um, but in effect, what we're going to have is uh, a very dedicated um, process to making sure that people are compliant. So if you have the system, it will make sure that you're doing kind of all of the right things. Um, if you have a new joiner, there will be a wizard that takes you through, OK, right, I need to make sure that if they are a UK or EU passport holder, I've got the right documents and taken the right images and scanned them. Or if they're not, that I've got all the correct extra documentation that I need to, to have with that. And that's all kind of stored on there. Um, and this dashboard will help you make sure that all of that is followed up and is maintained, and that when these documents expire within 12 or 36 months, that you are reminded that you need to make sure that you renew them as well, which is quite a specific thing. It's all very well doing it when they join. When they expire in two years' time and you haven't got a copy of the, if you get inspected, that's not a good place to be. OK. Um, and then I just mentioned that all of this then comes through into the calendar. So people can kind of look ahead and say, OK, right, well, this is a task that needs to be done on a particular day um, or, 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 or whatever, or these are the things that are coming up. Um, and we also have this concept of key dates, um, whereby sometimes there's other things that you kind of just want to see. You want to see kind of the scope ahead. Um, and uh, this kind of view just gives you an overview of just saying, OK, well, particular key dates. We seem to have birthdays in here a lot. But it might be start dates for contracts, end dates for contracts, and just being able to look ahead to a particular month or year and saying, OK, I know that I've got these 10 people with contracts ending if they're on you know, uh, fixed term contracts or anything else within the system. And that comes nicely into the dashboard. So trying to bring all of that information up front you know, to the HR team so it's really easy for them to get around all of that kind of stuff. Cool. Um, any questions on that? I realise I should probably ask for questions if anybody wants. Yeah. I was just thinking, if, you're, if we're already running a CV database um, to track and monitor our other everyday activities, I was just looking at your menu and obviously your menu is completely different. Is there a way of integrating our existing system with the HR or is it literally a separate, set up a separate system? So, yeah, so it's really great you brought that up. There's something to talk about a little bit later. So CVHR is kind of imagined as a separate system. Um, so uh, hopefully something that is very easy to install you know, as is, needs minimal configuration in order to set up, uh, and will be, for somebody who's slightly more uh, technical, will probably be in the format of a Drupal distribution. 
So it installs everything kind of in one go, and there you go, you've got, got something that's all set up for you. Um, the reason kind of being for that is that um, in terms of kind of the overlap between fundraising and contacts, uh, i.e. looking outwards and looking internally to staff, there isn't that much overlap between HR and your fundraising database other than maybe login or single sign-on is what we would call it. So that somebody wants to kind of have the same password for both systems rather than, you know, people all, what we find in all organizations, they go, oh, I didn't submit my leave request because I forgot my username and password to the HR system. So I've heard that from every, every, single, H, every single organization we've spoken to. Um, so this actually solves that. We can have a chat about that later. Um, cool. Yeah, so, uh, really, coming back to the first question and how it links into the current Civic, mm -hmm. we use it for the Civic, but we don't use it for fundraising. Okay, yeah. So, we don't use the fundraising at all in there, but we have, for instance, if we have a member, we run courses, mm -hmm. so a member of staff may actually be on one of our courses. Okay. But I still want to be able to have HR records for those staff. Yeah. Does that mean I have to have two separate entries, one for Civi and one for HR? Yeah, so the... So there's no joining? So you, depending on how you're using Civi, you could take some of the Civi HR modules and install it, but we wouldn't recommend it. So it's kind of visualized as being a separate system, Complete. a completely separate system. Now, they are based on the same systems, and if you wanted to get them to talk, you'd be a hell of a lot closer than if you started with another HR product and tried to get it to talk to CV. On the other hand, um, also HR data is particularly sensitive. Uh, and so it might be that, depending on what your other use case is. So, yeah. When I tried the installation of the first, you know, everybody on my, in CV, everything. Yes, so yeah, it's not been, yeah. So we are trying to make it clear that it's kind of a standalone product that it would have its own instance and it lives kind of in its own, uh, in, in its own way. Cool. I'll keep. So in fact, you could run it without having, without running Civi, really? Absolutely, yeah. So it, it is, it's got Civi under the hood, but you know, it runs, it's Civi HR. It's its own product. It's kind of does its own thing. Um, cool, okay, so I'll dive into a few of the other um, cool bits. I don't know if people need to make these slides a little bit bigger so that people can actually read it. Um, but I'm just gonna talk about uh, job contract histories. Um, so um, within Civi, we have uh, obviously one of the most important things that you wanna record is the legal job contract that a, uh, a person has with the organization. Uh, so we've done quite a lot of work uh, on the uh, job contract uh, module. Um, in order to make something that, again, if you look on that screen, it's a lot clearer. <laughs> um, but what you've got here is you've got a summary of the current state of the uh, job contract um, and also a full history of all of the changes that are made to that job contract as well. Um, so on the summary screen here, you can see what, what's going on at the moment. Um, and if we want to, say, change the terms, it's the end of the year, this person's got promoted. So let's say they've gone up to senior software developer. That's great. They're permanent and maybe uh, they've gone from unpaid to becoming paid now. Uh, well done, so they're at 38,000 US dollars, that's gone through, pay cycle is monthly. Um, we have benefits and deductions, so if somebody gets uh, a benefit, so let's say a bike, that's a fixed amount, uh, and maybe they have medical, which is a percentage amount, so maybe that's 5%, oh, that's quite high, 2%, let's say that. Um, oh. <laughs> Easy, yeah. Uh, um, and then maybe you adjust their leave, so now they're kind of getting a uh, leave of 20, 
Oh, I'm taking a risk on that, aren't I? Uh, and uh, insurance, pension, uh, etc., and funding notes. Uh, so save and make a new revision. Reason for change. So obviously you can put in your different reasons there. Um, and then we have the effective date of the change. So if I put this effective date in the future, what this will do? Oh, uh, went back. Whoops. If I put this effective date in the future, um, the changes won't come through until the effective date. Um, so we'll actually see that nothing's changed here on the summary because it hasn't come, uh, come into force yet. Um, but we will actually see that in the full history, this is kind of the new uh, effective date. So if you ever need to go back, you can have a look and see, okay, well, this is what that person's salary was until that particular uh, date or that person's contract status was until that particular date. And you can go back and view that as well. Um, one of the things I didn't mention, oh, it's been a bit slow. Uh, um, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is my internet dropped out. Come back, internet, please. Um, was that you can upload, obviously, the, the actual scans of the document as well, and you can revision them. So if there's any new documents that come with a new revision, you can add those to the, the next revision as well and kind of keep those kind of going. So here you can kind of view the current revision. Um, and uh, here these little clocks just allow you to look at a particular change. So maybe the leave changes. So this will give you the history of kind of the leave changes. And you're able to export those particular changes to CSV, or you can export the whole lot. So it just allows you to kind of drill down into what's useful. So what we found from the pilot clients was actually this is contractually very important. And if something does you know, go bad, you want to very quickly be able to look back and see exactly what happened and what the documents all say. Uh, and I think we've, we've done something that's, that's quite nice there. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, and job roles. So this is another thing which was uh, relatively unique to non-profit organizations, um, which is the fact that uh, non-profit organizations, people don't work in one particular department. Uh, very often somebody works in two particular roles within the organization. So sometimes, or well, three days a week I work you know, on the activity center, and two days a week I work in main office on this particular thing. And it can be difficult to kind of manage all of that information. Um, so we've brought out this kind of concept of uh, roles. And this is actually something that we're going to be coming back to later to kind of incorporate the whole concept of projects and how projects work within a nonprofit organization and how we look at costs for a, no, uh, a nonprofit and headcount on a project and all of those kind of things. But this is kind of the, the first iteration of that. And it allows you basically to say, OK, well, this person has a particular role. You know, which contract is that role attached to? The level, you know, some basic information, region, location, department, which then all gets drawn into the reporting. So we can look at headcounts by department, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but also then any funding uh, that is, or the funding for that role. So sometimes somebody's come along and is funding a particular uh, role uh, within the organization. A particular funder has provided a certain amount for this. And you're able to record that here and see that here. And again, cost centers. So you're able to record, uh, you know, somebody had more than one cost center. What does that go against? So CT01 maybe percentage fixed amount, 100%, uh, let's say that, save. And that all kind of goes in there as well. Um, so we've done you know, the starts of that, being able to record all that information, being able to report on it. And in the later versions, we're going to be looking at how we can expand that to kind of really looking at a project and say, OK, well, the organization is doing this project. How many people are allocated to that project? How many people are, you know, what are the cost centers for that project? What are the costs involved in it? And what the leave was used on that project, et cetera, bringing all of that stuff together. So yeah. Um, Crack on through. Contact summary. Um, so this was just a specific uh, piece of work that we wanted to do in order to kind of bring the information together uh, for a contact. Uh, I realize that I haven't actually brought up the slide for that. Here we go. So and this is kind of a first look at how the, the finished kind of contact screen will look. But just bringing all the key details into one place, being able to see somebody's leave and say, OK, what leave have they used? Um, sickness days, key dates, so coming back to those concepts of key dates as well. Um, and being able to add blocks to this in future as we kind of e extend the product as well. Cool. Uh, oh, and I've done self-service portal. OK.
So that's kind of the latest for version 1.5. Um, so then I just want to briefly talk about um, version 1.6, which is the work that's just starting at the moment and we're looking to kind of finish up um, before the end of the year. Um, so the first point, uh, responsive or mobile friendly SSP, so the self-service portal. Um, so we've just spent a lot of time, uh, if I get the right screen, uh, making all of this as mobile friendly as possible. So if the page comes up, don't die on me now, internet. I had all the pages ready. Oh. My, no, come back. Please. Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> oh, this is some really, oh, come on. The server died. Oh, Has the server died. Anyway, I might come back to that. Can you see if you can get the server back up? Yeah, OK. Um, so we did some work on kind of getting the, as you can see, the, the self-service uh, screen all responsive. Um, so actually, what's really cool there is that staff can request their leave on their phone or? Oh, it works for you. Just, just, just hates me. <laughs> it's fine. We'll, we'll hold up your phone and everybody will see it. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people can, people can check it out. It'll be fine. Yeah, believe us, it works. It's fine. <laughs> sure, uh, it looks really nice as well. Maybe. Yeah. No, it's just my laptop's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, well, you've got it in good detail. Um, so people are able to. Oh, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Cool. Um, so this is all kind of uh, nice and responsive here, so that. Um, you know, if, if somebody's working on their on their uh, on their phone, they can request leave on their phone. Managers can approve leave on their phone, uh, report sickness on their phone, uh, and all of those kind of things. Um, even down to the manager calendars, if this comes up. So these are all really nice and responsive as well. So you can swift acro uh, shift across and kind of see. Okay, well, I don't know why Adam Smith's on there twice. I think we've got two of him, but. Um, you know, oh, hang on a second, Adam's going to be, or was sick for two days there, and he's going to be off on vacation on the 14th. Well, actually, I'm not going to approve that. So you can do all of that kind of through the, through the mobile, which is, which is really cool. Um, and also kind of seeing your own leave calendar is on there as well. So kind of saying, oh, yeah, you're going to be off for those three days, uh, et cetera, and seeing kind of all of your things that have been approved and not been approved and requested. So all of that comes through. And also the staff directory, et cetera. Um, so we've done quite a lot of work around that to make it uh, mobile friendly um, and I think you've seen uh, a few of the screens there but we're doing quite a lot of work around kind of the user interface as well so uh, you know we're hoping to finalize kind of the the look and feel uh, and consolidate that across the whole of uh, Civi HR um, over the coming months uh, getting everything to kind of look like this and give everything a, a refresh uh, and hopefully contributing that back to core um, uh, in the new year at some point as well. Um, dashboards and reports. So we're busy kind of working on this at the moment. So it's, it's all very well putting all this data into your HR system. But what you really want is to be able to get some useful analysis out of that. Um, so we're just kind of starting to put together a, a, a kind of reporting framework. Um, and uh, starting kind of with people and then looking at other uh, metrics. Um, so of course with this, because it's based on Civi, you can export all your data out. So that's kind of like a given. If you want to get things into a CSV and do some play with it in Excel, that all works. You can do that at any point. Um, what we've been trying to do with, the, uh, with our reports is to give something that's going to be a bit more meaningful and a bit more visual. Um, so we're kind of looking at uh, comparisons and how you can kind of look at your data uh, visually and dashboarding and so on. Um, so um, the start of this, so this is just a, a live example, but I'll show you some of the other uh, designs. But um, for example, looking at headcount, looking at headcount across departments, being able to compare all of that and see, 
oh, okay, finance have got three people, <laughs> marketing got two people. You probably knew this already if you had this amount of people, to be fair. Um, and then being able to click on those uh, and saying, uh, okay, who are those particular people, etc., uh, and drilling down, you'll then be able to export that data out and get at it. So you're having a bit more of a visual interactive kind of um, uh, dashboarding. Again, we've got some stuff for uh, genders at the moment, so seeing the kind of gender split across the organization um, and being able to, to look at that. Am I right, the settings? Is it settings for gender or age? Is it? Yeah, age is the one, yeah. Um, and then again, so ages, so seeing what the breakdown of ages is. Um, and then there's some settings here actually to kind of play with all of the graphs, et cetera, and move things around, add uh, things. So two technical points to make about this. Um, the first one is that this is all based on Drupal views. So for people who, or some organizations already have Drupal capability in the organization, you can, without being a developer, create new views and add these to these, uh, these dashboards. So you can create extra graphs kind of all based on Drupal views if you have kind of those, those technical capabilities in the organization. Um, and actually you don't have to write any code to do that kind of stuff. Um, and the second point was that around permissioning for this. So what we wanted to do was, um, you know, and this came out of a conversation with say Farm Africa and a couple of the other larger nonprofits, which is a significant amount of the HR team's time is spent producing reports for management or senior management in order to say, hey guys, this is where we're at. And they have to do a whole load of work in terms of getting all the documentation in, right? What's the average age of these people? What were the start dates, blah, 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 getting all of that in together in order to then send that off to management. And the idea here was to create this dashboard that has its own kind of permission system around it that we can then provide to management so they can log in and look at the data themselves. So they're able to log in whenever they want to and get this up at the board meeting and say, right, what's the current position? What's the history? And all of those kind of things. Um, so if I dive into kind of some of the other reporting, because this is quite important, I don't think it's on this one. Hold on. So we'll be looking at things from absence reporting uh, and obviously kind of time, you know, so what was it between these particular dates, uh, you know, days taken, number of employees, absence duration of absences, um, sick leave across uh, departments, etc. Um, and then also looking at uh, appraisals, so I'll come to appraisals soon as well, so reporting and record, uh, performance management, etc. Um, and also training when we come to that as well. Uh, assignment, so how many new joiners, what's the attrition rates, uh, <coughs> employment, and again trying to look at this all visually across kind of departments, levels, contract type, project type, but actually any other field that you have kind of on the contract with. Uh, so, I think that's cool. Um, Internationalisation and teams. Um, so, for an organisation like uh, Farm Africa, um, they've got uh, six different divisions basically, or six divisions in separate countries, um, and all need to have access to their own uh, kind of data basically that needs to be separate from the program. So, Sydney already has kind of capability to do this in something called ACL groups. Um, they're a little bit complicated to set up, um, but also they don't necessarily apply to uh, other elements in, in, in the system. So, for example, if the team that works in, uh, let's say, get more countries, but Zambia, is that No, no, that's a serious question. So the team that's in that, in that country, um, you know, they, they should be able to see contacts in that country, but maybe they also want to do a recruitment process that is only for that country, or maybe they have an appraisal process that is only for that country. So we're developing a, uh, a team planning concept for uh, CV HR whereby you can say, well, this particular item is for a particular team and only people in my team are able to see that. Um, and so just to give you guys a little taste of my frame of that, here, let's say for an appraisal site where you would say, this is the access setting, and you'll specify that only people in my particular team here are able to kind of access that. So trying to build up kind of the capability for the HR to work across you know, multiple districts um, and, and multiple uh, countries. Um, cool. Uh, and the other part of internationalisation was uh, for the UK or localisation. 
is looking at the UK's order agency work that I, I showed you before. Um, another big piece of work that we're doing at the moment is around uh, appraisals process management. Uh, so um, appraisals is you know, a really key part of any HR system. Um, and having spoken to you know, quite a number of different uh, non-profit organisations around appraisals, everybody does things a little bit differently. Uh, and it's really hard to try and create one process that, that works for everyone. Um, and so what we did instead was look at this and say, how can we help an organisation in order to manage that process and make sure that everything actually happens and everything is documented kind of correctly. Um, and so we've done quite a lot of work around this um, in order to develop uh, a, uh, a concept that can kind of work for everybody. So um, what we have are um, appraisal cycles. So this is kind of like your dashboard here. Uh, so if you log in, you'll see all the different cycles and where everything's up to. Um, and if you take a look at a particular cycle, so to explain cycles, um, what you might find is that in an organisation, you want to run a cycle uh, of, of appraisals from, let's say, from 1st of January to 31st of December for one uh, set of staff. It might be that you run more than one cycle because maybe the directors run on a slightly different cycle or people in this team over here run a different cycle <coughs> on different days uh, than others. So we have this concept of, of cycles. Uh, and what you're able to then do is add contacts into the cycle. So, hey, I've created this cycle, I'm adding contacts into my cycle, okay, and then they will be part of the appraisal process. Um, and we have several steps in the appraisal process, and there's some flexibility around how you change this process, but in effect, People are awaiting self-appraisal, so at the beginning they get added to the cycle, they'll get an email, it will come up on their self-service portal to say, okay, I've got to put in the self-appraisal. Um, they fill that in and put that online. Um, the manager then will get a little task and they'll come to take a look at that. They know that they have to review or have a conversation with the uh, appraisee. Uh, and then they'll put the, uh, put the, uh, the notes from kind of that review or the fact that that review took place and conversation happened on their update. Um, and then we have a, a waiting grade. So um, the uh, manager is then, sorry, if you want to give the permission to the manager to be able to put the grade in, they're able to put a grade in. Uh, alternatively, um, that goes straight to HR staff and they're able to kind of put the grade in uh, directly there. Um, HR can then approve it, or if they put the grade in, they can pass it onto the net, uh, and then mark it complete. Um, any changes to the grade uh, are stored in kind of like a history, so that if any changes are made at any point, you have it, and again, the reason to make that change. So, um, so here we've got kind of the administrator's dashboard screen, so they're able to see for this cycle how many people are at any stage in the process. Um, if people have already got grades, then it will show the average grades. Uh, how they're getting on, uh, overdue appraisals in the cycle, uh, so if there's anybody that they need to check us up. Uh, and then if they want to see the individual appraisals, then they can zoom in here and, and search and actually get to the particular uh, individuals themselves. Uh, so, and of course, if you want to look at a particular contact record, uh, So for Amy here, we've got their appraisal history. I think this won't be for the one time actually, probably sorry. Um, and the average grade that they've had, uh, and then their history of all the appraisals that have kind of gone through and what they're up to. So you can kind of take a, take a look at that uh, and view kind of the grade and the grade history there if you if you want to as well. Uh, so all those details are there. Um, and as I said, all of this will come through onto the self-service portal. So when they log in. So this will be the staff, uh, my appraisals, they'll have a new block there uh, so they can see their history directly for their side as well and they can view the appraisals that they're involved with here uh, okay, and upload the self-assessment if they're supposed to upload uh, saving the sign to manager, for example, and the sign. Uh, and then from the manager's point of view, um, they're able to see all of the people that they manage uh, kind of status with the appraisals, so view appraisals, okay. 
what lets you the sales appraisal or upload the actual appraisal that the manager will do and confirm any notes and the fact that the meeting takes the place and when it took place.